All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm Derek Adair. I'm a field cloud architect with Zerto. I work with uh, some of our top CSPs in the Northeast US and Eastern Canada. And we're going to talk today about how to prepare your holiday IT resilience plan with Zerto. It's slightly more or less important than some of your family members' sobriety plans at the dinner table these holidays. So as we take a look at three steps to a happy holiday season, uh, we're going to look at multi-cloud and elastic multi-cloud and, and how that uh, you know, perception of the market has changed, uh, what companies are doing uh, to be able to leverage uh, you know, these additions to the marketplace as options for uh, where to place your data. Uh, where to place your data is, is more important than ever now. Uh, almost as important is how you're going to now uh, get your data out of places. So we'll also look at the types of outages that you want to be able to prepare for uh, and understand what the consequences may be as part of your IT resilience plan to be able to prevent any type of downtime uh, in any of the locations where your data are. So if we look at some of the holiday stats, uh, 107.3 million Americans traveled 50 miles or more from home during the holidays. So uh, you know who's going to be watching uh, your data center uh, your data, that's one third of the American public, right? So, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you have coverage during these holiday times. Uh, you know, everyone knows what their roles and responsibilities are during these times. Uh, there are obviously people that are going to have to sacrifice holidays and, you know, we're great, greatly indebted to those people. Uh, I've certainly been in that role uh, in the past. And then if we look at what the, uh, the busyness of, of the holidays are, uh, you know, especially in retail, right? 691 billion in retail sales spent in just November and December. And then if we look at just transaction volume, uh, the IDC estimates that by 2020, business transactions are going to reach up to 450 billion per day. So that's, you know, basically, uh, you know, almost 10 transactions per human you know, on the earth every day. Uh, so we're really seeing an incredible scale up of, uh, you know, transaction volume, uh, sales volume. Uh, this is all happening during the holidays. And of course, you know, there's other times of the year uh, where it's important to uh, prepare for, especially tax season would be a fine example of that. But we are going to focus just on the holidays uh, for the purposes of our presentation today. So an IT resilience strategy means your company, excuse me, means your company is prepared, robust, able to adapt to change and recover quickly from any speed bump it may hit. So these are some of the pillars of uh, what it is that we're discussing when we're looking at what IT resilience means. And you know, it's something that's kind of popped up in the past year or two uh, that's really gained steam. We're seeing uh, the CXO level, we're seeing board members you know, asking down, um, are we IT resilient? And you know, if you're in the position where you have to answer those questions, uh, having that IT resilience strategy in place now uh, before they start asking uh, is definitely the best methodology. So uh, you know, we're looking at mobility and how are we able to move our workloads? Are we stuck somewhere uh, you know, once we get there or can we move out? One of the things that Zerto has brought along is that uh, you know, agnostic uh, philosophy with uh, both cloud and with hardware. So we're not thinking about, uh, you know, what the underlying infrastructure is. We're basically able to move the data, uh, you know, from place to place, as long as we're talking about the two greatest hypervisors in the world, you know, three of the greatest public clouds in the world, 350 of the greatest CSPs in the world, um, you know, your mobility between those places, uh, it's incredible what we can do now compared to what it was five years ago. And then in addition to that, we have orchestration, right? You don't want to have uh, a tool for replication that doesn't handle the orchestration. It really drives complexity. Um, it drives down your employees, uh, and it makes it very difficult with scripting. Uh, all the things that need to be done. Zerto has, uh, you know, developed this product uh, in a way that we have taken all the knowledge that's been built over the past 20 years of DR and made DR and IT resilience simple for our customers. So automation and orchestration kind of play together. 
uh, and then testing, right? Uh, one of the hallmarks of the industry has been, oh yes, we have backup or we have DR uh, in place. And then when you start penetrating about, uh, you know, how much testing has been done, uh, you know, possibly no testing has been done uh, in a long time, possibly no testing has been done ever uh, since it was configured. Uh, you know, you want to have the ability to be able to test before you do a failover. Uh, you want to confirm that everything's in place. Uh, you have the ability to do that uh, before you commit. Um, important concept to understand and to follow. Uh, also, no downtime. I mean, that's pretty obvious in this day and age. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, you're probably talking about, you know, five days a week, eight hours a day. Uh, and that was enough for a lot of companies. That is not the case anymore. This is a 24-hour world. Uh, it's a global world. Customers are looking to, uh, you know, furnish their wares all over the world uh, and not necessarily sticking to that uh, nine to five, five day a week model, which has kind of gone out the door. So as we look at mobility orchestration, automation testing and no downtime, we see that these are some of the things that make up an IT resilient strategy. So there's still plenty of time to uh, have your strategy in place for this year uh, when you look at sort of the again the history of the market you know you've been talking about four weeks of professional services to you know install any type of you know orchestrated dr with multiple point solutions um you know that's not the case anymore with zerto uh, you have a very easy installation process uh that can go into all the multiple locations that i've already mentioned um so you know planning for next year can also be planning for this year um, if you do not have the infrastructure in place to be able to protect your workloads during the holiday seasons. So in planning for next year um, and thinking about what you might want to do, uh, you know, moving to the cloud during the holiday season uh, for performance and scale uh, is a strategy that's been leveraged by, you know, Fortune 500s, uh, enterprises, and it's, it's now moving down the chain, right? Anyone can do this now. Uh, it's not just for the enterprise anymore. So uh, you know, being able to scale your environment in a cost effective manner, you know, with the economies of scale of public cloud or CSP um, and paying only for the capacity capacity that you need for a few months out of the year. So uh, if you actually try to, you know, scale your environment for its peaks, um, you know, you'll be devastated financially. So, uh, you know, being able to be elastic and scale out and scale back, uh, you know, these are the principles that are driving uh, you know, the efficiencies that we're seeing from the cloud. So don't let a Grinch hold you down, right? This is a holiday themed um, webinar, so we're gonna, we're gonna ride with that. Uh, there's the Grinch. You do not wanna get hit with a Grinch uh, you know, on Christmas day or Christmas Eve. Uh, so you wanna have the capabilities of multi-cloud and elastic multi-cloud. So if we look at you know, our, uh, you know, one of my favorite architecture slides uh, for one to many, uh, this one-to-many feature that's come out from Zerto um, gives you the capability to go to three different places with the same virtual machine. So you're talking about, rather than the 3-2-1 backup rule, you're talking about having that VM in three separate places, fully restorable um, and ready to be moved into production. Uh, so this gives you uh, tremendous flexibility. We have been designing for the application now for years, which is something that was promised a long time ago and still, uh, you know, in many cases does not come to fruition. Um, so with these applications, we can put them in the appropriate place for value. We can put them in the appropriate place for performance, some combination of those, uh, perhaps uh, specific workloads work best in, you know, one cloud and not the other. Uh, but you have a tremendous amount of flexibility to come and go as you please, uh, you know, from these clouds uh, and use them in a strategic manner uh, rather than, you know, kind of being a slave to your equipment and only being able to manage and perform in ways that uh, that equipment will let you. We've kind of given the freedom, uh, you know, from the underlying infrastructure and this flexibility allows you to move to all these places. So if we look at, um, you know, some of the companies that see this, uh, you know, holiday business driven towards them, uh, we look no further than FanDuel and DraftKings, right? Uh, online gambling is a massive multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, it's a very specified time frame that 
these infrastructures are being hit massively. You know, the periodic heavy use, of course, NFL games starting at one Eastern time, and there's a ton of activity leading up to the game. I would argue that there might be even more activity leading up to the four o'clock games for people trying to make up for the one o'clock game loss, as we all know how gambling goes. Uh, but in spite of that, you know, this is mission critical to the business. Um, if the platform suffered an outage, the lost revenue, uh, you know, is, is perhaps mind boggling. Uh, but also, uh, you know, when you're in a market where there's two uh, top uh, suppliers and, you know, one of them has an outage, you know, the other one's sure going to be real happy about that when they're collecting, you know, the business of the people that were burned. So uh, you really can't afford in this industry and many others to, you know, have that moment of downtime where, uh, you know, customers are needing you. Um, you know, we've seen that, uh, you know, earlier this year on a special day, uh, and it's just something that you want to be prepared for. Uh, the elasticity that you can gain leveraging uh, CSPs and public clouds, uh, being able to furnish resources on an on-demand basis, uh, you know, this is good business uh, to be able to do this. So uh, you want to make sure that you have these capabilities. If we look specifically at one cloud uh, and, and look, drill down a little bit on Azure auto scaling, uh, you know, having the built-in auto scaling features, um, if the application has a predictable regular workload, you can scale on a schedule like FanDuel Duel would be or like DraftKings would be, you know, uh, you know what the specific times you're going to be hit are. So, um, you know, that can be beneficial to be able to scale out on that schedule. Uh, and then, Additionally, uh, aggressive auto scaling for critical workloads, um, adding new instances quickly under heavy load to handle the traffic, uh, but then also scaling back afterwards, right? The uh, amount of money saved not having to stay scaled out, um, you know, is going to be tremendous based on these types of holiday workloads and specialized workloads. Additionally, uh, you want to be able to design for scale in because uh, the application is going to scale out, and when those instances are removed, you want to make sure that the application can gracefully handle those instances being removed. So the multi-cloud hybrid cloud, this is, um, you know, along with IT resilience, this has become uh, the message du jour of the industry. Um, I think that the enablement that you get from Zerto um, you know, gives you the flexibility uh, and aggressive capabilities to be able to manage your business better. Uh, cross hypervisor VM conversion on the fly. So uh, we've been helping customers for years now that want to migrate from Hyper-V to VMware or from VMware to Hyper-V. Uh, you know, I think depending on what your workloads are, one or the other uh, is a great solution. Um, and, you know, it's up to you to decide what that is. But uh, if that time comes when uh, you know, the licensing is unappealing or whatever the case may be, and you want to be able to move off that platform, we make it very simple to be able to do that. Um, protecting and moving to, from and between multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. So if you think back to the slide that I showed, um, you want to be able to move your workloads when necessary, whatever the case, whether it's planned or unplanned, uh, proactive or reactive, uh, you want to have that capability. It's something that you really, um, you know, can't live without at this point with all the economies of scale that are available for your IT environment to just be managing, um, you know, your environment and your DR environment. Uh, it's not cost effective. Uh, so that's why we're seeing customers moving, uh, you know, DR into the cloud. Uh, you know, we're really starting to see this year um, enterprises move production into the cloud. So I think that's something that we'll see accelerate, uh, you know, over the next five and 10 years uh, that even these high enterprises are going to start leveraging cloud. And, you know, in 20 years, we'll, we'll be at a utility model likely. But, um, you know, for now, we have what we have to work with and being able to uh, move between uh, clouds, be able to set uh, the standards for your applications, um, you know, really gives you a leg up an advantage and you know a prevention of downtime. So again, to the point of uh, you know resources and and uh, consumption, we're 
minimizing cloud resources consumption before failover. So uh, we're not using compute in the cloud uh, other than the CCA to, um, you know, it, it's not being charged until you actually do a failover live or a failover test. So, um, you know, that's an important notion. We're not running, uh, you know, two production environments in two separate places. Uh, you know, this is a cost effective uh, strategy for IT resilience. Uh, and, you know, additionally, we support vCloud Director. Uh, you know, as you, you know, we support uh, vCenter and SCVM as well. So if we look at uh, one of our case studies with McKesson, uh, I think we've all uh, you know, heard of McKesson. Uh, anyone that's done anything in the healthcare industry uh, is certainly familiar with them. Uh, they wanted to reduce the cost of multiple solutions and move DR to cloud. So the solution, they took advantage of Zerto's multi-cloud vision, which I encourage everyone to do, and they provided an internal DRAS model for IT efficiency. So, uh, you know, in, in a sense, they became a cloud service provider for their own internal use. And by doing that, they reduced the cost 5x by eliminating their DR data centers. They reduced their system validation recovery time by 90% and reduced system protection setup time from days to less than one hour. So, you know, this in a nutshell is you know, the payback that um, the RTO that our customers are seeing. Um, and when you go in and you have, um, you know, the capability to eliminate DR data centers, um, you know, this solution, IT resilience, um, it really becomes very cost effective to go in this direction. You're not only gaining the value of uh, the capabilities, but you're actually saving money. And when you can demonstrate that to the customer, it's, you know, certainly a win-win. Um, and it's been, uh, you know, very beneficial for us and the customer. So um, a great case study to, to kind of demonstrate that. So let's not let a Grinch steal the holidays, right? One of the uh, main reasons for IT resilience, of course, is to prevent outages, right? Whether those are planned or unplanned. We want to have our plan in place. We don't want it to be a 150-page run book. Uh, we want it to be something that's very simple and uh, you know effective to put in place that an IT generalist can follow, um, you know, without having to have the heavy lift of a huge DR team uh, to be able to script everything uh, that we're able to do. So, what goals take priority in your business, right? This is, um, you know, what you you should be thinking about. Um, you know, as you're building out your IT resilience plan, you want to be able to protect against any disruption and deliver that always on customer experience, more important than ever. We're accelerating cloud adoption. Um, I think all our customers are accelerating cloud adoption. I think that the average customer I saw in a recent stat has five uh, cloud plays going on at any one time. Uh, you know, and that, of course, can be shadow IT with uh, Box or Dropbox. Uh, but that can also be, uh, you know, smarter customers that are actually, uh, you know, having the foresight to understand where the value is and, and where the savings are uh, to accelerate the use of cloud to get there. Uh, leveraging the efficiencies of the cloud to support the business, simplifying workload mobility, uh, application migration, uh, and the freedom to move workloads regardless of the underlying infrastructure. So these are all important tenets of, uh, you know, what you want to be working towards. Uh, in your environment uh, to be able to be IT resilient. So let's take a look at what migrations look like before Zergo IT resilience, right? It's almost, uh, you know, testing whether or not you can stick your tongue on the pole. Uh, painful migration and consolidation projects. Uh, you know, I worked on these for years. Um, you know, anything that has to do uh, with physical environments can be very difficult. Um, preferably customers have, you know, done the due diligence to move off those legacy uh, platforms and virtualize their environments. Um, they've had a lack of flexibility in workload placement. So, uh, you know, not being able to give applications the level of service they deserve uh, when they want. And, you know, basically at two years and 10 months of a storage array being pinned to, uh, you know, the fact that the back end's fragmented and, you know, you're not getting the level of service that you had hoped for uh, and you're planning your next move. So, um, you know, perhaps you plan your next move to the cloud. Uh, limited ability to move between technologies, uh, planned disruptions requiring maintenance windows and creating risk, uh, the potential of fines and cost overruns, 
the high cost of maintaining that legacy infrastructure and then high cost negative customer experience and brand damage due to business disruption so uh you know these are this is legacy migration um you know this is what it looked like uh it was it was fraught with peril and uh you know it was a great money maker for the people that were able to do it um you know now uh it's a much simpler process it's still not something that you want to take on as a science project that's why it's good to have a strong partner uh that does this every day that works with you to get you through this uh but when you look at migrations after uh and what the outcomes are uh with zerto uh you're going to be looking at, at much more joy than pain so uh with zerto the migration and consolidation products can occur on time and on budget you have reduced data center spends you're saving money by decommissioning decommissioning the legacy technologies quickly and you know not having to refresh that half million 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 and a half dollar dr site um you know that's the best uh use case that that i see where you know customers are just saving tremendous amounts of money um and then the big one right no downtime during migration so you know, we're not taking a huge maintenance window. Uh, you know, we're doing everything on the fly. Uh, this has changed the marketplace and it's changed the perception of, you know, how migrations can be done. And then when you're doing those migrations, it's important to manage your workload placement. Uh, you know, that's the time uh, to optimize your workload placement. Placement That's cost, performance, business results, um, you know, however you want it to be, but you can break up um, your protection, you know, with a virtual protection groups and design around the application. And that's really, um, you know, what's been recommended for years and years. It's just been very hard to do. Um, you know, things have gotten easier with Zerto. So how are we going to measure success when we're talking about, uh, you know, these migrations, uh, you know, the before and after? Uh, obviously, if we talk to customers and what they've done before Zerto, um, time to complete the migration project you know how long is that taking you typically um, and then you know speak to Zerto customers and find out how long it's taking them you know that's where the proof is right is talking to our customers when I go to uh, when I go to road shows uh, you know I often have a customer standing over my shoulder talking to our customers telling them you know how they use it in their environment and what the benefits are uh, you know that's been one of the greatest uh, tools for for Zerto is just you know the excitement of our customers around using the product and the capabilities that they've been given. So the cost to complete the migration project obviously is tremendously important. So, uh, you know, time and money is, is what makes the world go around. And when you're talking about migration, it's no different. Uh, migration downtime also. So, uh, you know, your RTO, um, what is it now? And, and, you know, we already know what it can be, you know, somewhere between three and 15 seconds, depending on the workload. Um, what's the cost benefit from that migration? Uh, you know, that huge dollar values that have been thrown out there where, um, you know, you're not paying for the real estate anymore. You're not paying for the equipment anymore. And all of a sudden you're kind of in a pool of people that are paying for that real estate and equipment together. Uh, you know, the cost savings from that consolidation are tremendous. Uh, so there's still lots of customers out there that are experiencing this pain. Um, and, you know, I suggest that with an IT resilience plan, uh, that they can avoid all these headaches and, you know, these success metrics look a lot better, uh, you know, with the new model. So let's not let that Grinch destroy the holidays, right? Uh, unplanned disasters. 93% uh, of respondents in the state of IT resilience report have experienced tech-related business disruptions in the past two years. Um, it's really hard to avoid in this day and age. Uh, there's so many different uh, vectors of attack. Uh, you know, for unplanned outages, um, it's something that you have to be prepared for. And if you look at what the consequences are, right, to, uh, you know, these tech-related business disruptions, um, you know, the number one is employee overtime, right? And, you know, I don't know too many folks that are actually, um, you know, getting paid by the hour that are working on these things. So the reality is, you know, it's not, whoa, I have overtime, I'm getting paid a ton of money. It's, you know, I'm getting grinded down and I'm working a ton of hours. You know, even though I, I expect that, uh, you know, I'm going to have to work extra, uh, this was unexpected. Um, so having this, you know, IT resilience plan in place, you're not grinding your employees down. You're not losing employee productivity from that time being down. What's the cost to recover? 
um, you already have a plan in place with Zerto, so uh, you know that's a very easy recovery. Engaging consultants or specialists, having to call people, you know, for an emergency because you didn't have a plan in place, uh, you know, that's all unacceptable in this day and age. The loss of revenue, the unrecoverable data, minor damage to company reputation. Uh, these are all things to avoid, right? Permanent loss of customers, nobody wants that. Major damage to the company reputation. Every time we see, uh, you know, one of these business disruptions, it's a newspaper article, especially if it's uh, some type of public uh, facing company. Uh, you know, we hear about it, we see it in the news, and you know, there's egg on their face. So, you know, preparing to be IT resilient and making sure that these things aren't going to happen to you. Uh, you know, obviously, we want to take you down that road. And if we look back um, at the billion dollar weather and climate disasters, um, you know, wildfires, hailstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes. Uh, we have a hurricane, obviously, that, that just hit, uh, you know, the panhandle yesterday. Uh, we have uh, lots of use cases of customers uh, moving their data out of the way of these horrible storms before they happen. So you're not waiting for it to happen to you. You are proactively avoiding the disaster. Um, you know, that just wasn't really, uh, you know, even in play 10 years ago. So we've come a long way. Um, you know, obviously we don't wish disaster on anyone. Um, I, I have noticed that uh, the casualties have been much less, uh, you know, due to the technology that's available. And obviously, uh, you know, humanity is far more important than our data, but that does not mean that we do not have to worry about protecting our data. So uh, with all these dangers uh, just from weather, um, you know, that alone is enough to uh, have some type of plan prepared to be able to uh, combat these things. So, you know, what do disasters look like before IT resilience? And, and thank you, Jimmy Stewart, for being such a great actor. Uh, that's pretty much what it looked like in the past. Uh, they create a negative customer experience, impact the brand, and incur high costs. There's significant time and resources spent maintaining the products, handling the disruptions, multiple point products creating high cost of ownership complexity compromising slas and then failed or insufficient or no dr tests leading to failed audits non-compliance you know these are all uh, you know obviously things that we want to avoid and you know what does that look like after right um everyone's happy uh all business applications are fully protected without data time downtime or data loss you're using fewer resources to manage DR and backup, and that's you know hardware resources, that's people resources, uh, the cost savings uh, that have come into DR over the past five years have been uh, stellar. You have easy and effective testing, so uh, you can test your failover before you do the live failover, before you commit. Um, you're gonna understand, you're gonna be able to go in, see your VMs, what's working, oh, everything's working, okay, let's do this failover. Uh, the IT resources allocated to strategic, strategic business initiatives instead of maintaining operations. So, you know, instead of spending all that time with what you already have, uh, you're off planet how to do new things and how to capture new revenue for your company based on, uh, you know, your agility and what you're uh, able to design and do based on your flexibility that you now have. Um, and then again, production applications can be easily created. You can make copies. Um, so for dev refresh, dev test, if you want to test patching, uh, you know, in that test bubble, you can do that. It's kind of become best practice now is to, uh, you know, not be taking a maintenance window to test it in production, but actually put that in a test bubble and perform the operation, make sure everything's good, and then perform the failover. So what are the metrics to measure success here? Uh, what's the number and length of service interruptions that you've had? Um, you know, what's your RPO and RTO now and, you know, what can it look like with an IT resilience plan? Um, you know, what's the cost that's been incurred by outages over the past three years? Um, and then what's the amount of data lost when recovering from a historic point in time now currently? So uh, you can expect uh, to move up and to the right uh, on all these things with Zerto. Um, so typically that conversation, uh, you know, with end users is a good one. Um, there's a lot of pain around DR. Uh, there's a lot of pain around IT resilience in the marketplace. And, you know, Zerto's been helping those customers for a long time now, uh, but still uh, with 
there's a lot of customers that maybe haven't even heard of Zerto uh, and don't understand what the capabilities are in the marketplace now. So, you know, it's up to all of us to, to ensure that we're educating customers. Case study, uh, Wood Forest National Bank. Uh, you know, this is, is a good one. We have also a number of professional sports teams that avoided hurricanes in Florida uh, last year. Um, so Wood Forest National Bank in particular uh, had one data center that was in a hurricane zone and one in a tornado prone area. Uh, in order to ensure IT resilience remain operational and meet compliance requirements, they leverage Zerto to proactively migrate production to data center in the safe zone every six months to avoid disaster while regular testing to meet government compliance. As a bank, um, you know, obviously you're gonna have more stringent requirements um, and you know, Zerto allows Wood Forest Bank to meet those requirements, save 30% in cost savings and be back and up and running in less than the 72 hour time frame allotted by the FDIC. Um, so this is the new standard for um, proactively avoiding disasters. Uh, we're not, again, uh, you know, huddling uh, in the bomb shelter, waiting for it to pass and hoping for the best. Uh, you know, we're proactively moving the data out of the geo into a geo where there is not a current threat. Uh, and then when that uh, storm has passed or whatever the natural disaster may be, um, you know, we bring that up in the location that we want it in. But, uh, you know, the point is that you have the flexibility to move production uh, between multiple locations, including the public cloud, including CSPs. Um, and that gives you just unbelievable, unprecedented flexibility. So this is, you know, obviously become sort of a favorite topic of the industry. Um, we don't want to let a Grinch ransom the holidays. Um, you know, not having uh, some type of protection that you can roll back to seconds before uh, the ransomware attack um, is dangerous this, in these, this day and age. Uh, the chances of getting hit by ransomware are pretty good at this point. If you look at some of the stats here, um, you know, it's been a 6,000% increase in email campaigns. This is easy money for, uh, you know, people that are outside of uh, the law. Um, you know, 2017, $300 million, 56,000 infections in one month, uh, you know, 100 new ransomware families. So 50% uh, will target businesses in 2020. These are scary stats, and you need a plan in place to be able to recover from ransomware. Uh, we had an end user customer that uh, was going to go on to a CSP for DR. Uh, they had scheduled for January 12th. I remember that because it was my birthday. And they pushed to January 29th. Well, on January 28th, they were hit with ransomware. Um, if you remember what Bitcoin was like in January, it was up to around fourteen to sixteen thousand uh, dollars. You know, three and a half bitcoins used to be three hundred and fifty dollars, and you know the admin could pull their wallet out and pay the the ransomware fee if they wanted to. But that's no longer the case. You know, when you're talking about Bitcoin, even at six thousand dollars, three and a half bitcoins over twenty thousand um, dollars. So. It's important to have a plan in place uh, that you're going to be able to, uh, you know, go back to a good point in time. Uh, you know, threat mitigation tools are important to have, but they don't always work. You need a threat remediation tool. Zerto is not a threat mitigation tool, but we will help you recover uh, and be able to, uh, you know, basically be giving high fives rather than, you know, pulling out the, the CEO's credit card to be able to uh, pay the ransomware. So if we look at an example of one of our customers that had ransomware attacks, uh, both with and without Zerto, because one of the things that we've seen is, uh, you know, if you've been hit once, you may be hit again. We've had, we have one customer that's recovered four times uh, from ransomware with Zerto, uh, but Tenkati in particular, without Zerto, they were backing up to tape and disk. Um, they had an entire file server at a manufacturing facility with 12 hours of data loss and it took two weeks to recover. Well, you know, you don't want to wait until that happens to be a driver to, uh, you know, implement your IT resilience plan, right? Don't wait until the disaster. Um, the disaster will come, uh, so plan for it. Uh, with Zerto, they're getting continuous replication. They're getting, you know, an RPO of 10 seconds um, and they can recover in under 10 minutes. So. Uh, it just becomes a much more uh, relaxed and easy to manage environment, um, you know, when you have an IT resilience plan in place. So, what are the key learnings that uh, you know they talk about when uh, you know when Jamie from 
Tenkade comes and talks to our customers, uh, you know, he's he's saying uh, continuous user and admin ed education. Um, you know, obviously that's so important. Um, having multiple people comfortable with the process so you don't bottleneck on one person when they go on vacation. Uh, you know, there's a lack of knowledge. Uh, never think your organization is impenetrable. Um, that, you know, no matter how much you spend on those um, those threat tools, uh, you know, there's still a chance. Everyone's working to get ahead of those things. Um, so you want to be sure you're ready with your plan. Um, change is good. Always look for ways to improve and, and definitely test your recovery plans to prove your RTOs and RPOs. So five tips to stay resilient for the holidays. Invest in a solution to make your infrastructure resilient. Move critical applications to the cloud. Um, you know, that's more important than ever now um, to be able to have, uh, you know, that extra copy in the cloud, uh, you know, away from your geolocation. Train your employees on potential disaster scenarios. Um, you know, you want to have more than one person, obviously, ready to handle these situations. Uh, test, test, and test again. So, um, you know, that capability to test before you fail over, as I mentioned many times, um, you know, it never gets old because when you actually do it, uh, you know, you could find something uh, that may have prevented you from having a successful failover. Uh, so it's a great methodology. You can do it during a boot storm. You can do it during, uh, you know, the worst times because it doesn't impact production. Uh, and then, of course, make sure your vendors and partners are ready. Uh, and finally, have a successful and profitable holiday season. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, this has been helpful and getting a better understanding of how to be IT resilient over your holidays. And I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to, uh, to listen and join us. Thank you.